Alrighty, well, I think that's enough time. Thank you for joining us for our Health Sciences Career Night. My name is Carly Pappas, and I'm the college recruiter here at Tremana. Just a little bit about myself. I graduated from Old Dominion University back in 2018. Upon graduation, I spent about a year and a half with George Mason University as an admissions counselor. So I helped both freshmen and transfer students apply to George Mason. And then in October of 2019, I joined Germana as a recruiter. So very similar to what I was doing up at Mason, just smaller scale. But we're here to talk about our health sciences programs at Germana. We're going to learn a little bit about our emergency medical technician, health and physical education, pharmacy technician, and personal training. Then we'll move over into dental, dental assisting, and dental hygiene, and then our various capacities of nursing, and finally, um, physical therapist assistant. We'll talk a little bit about how you can get started here at Germana, and if we have time at the very end, we'll take your questions. If you have a question throughout the presentation, feel free to drop them in the chat box and we will address them at the very end. But let's first hear from emergency medical technician. Unfortunately, our professor, she's currently teaching at this moment, so she was nice enough to record a short video for us to listen to. If you have additional questions, I am recording this presentation, so you'll be able to receive her contact information at that point. But let me go ahead. Good evening. I'm sorry I'm not available to speak with you personally, but I am teaching emergency medical technician lab this evening. So my name yes. is Pamela Bertoni, and I am the program director of the EMS program and an assistant professor of EMS here at Germana. We have a brand new program and we're really excited to get it off the ground. If you have additional questions or at least want to know a little bit more about the program, I invite you to take a look at our Facebook page or at the website that I've created just to give you a little bit more information. Otherwise, what you're looking at to become an emergency medical technician is one semester of courses that's an eight credit hour obligation if you just want the certification but if you'd like the career study certificate there's additional courses that you'll take that are non-EMS in, in nature and then there's the advanced EMT certification with also a career study certificate available and then if you'd like to become a paramedic that's a five semester commitment um, but you will walk away with an associate's degree all successful EMS students will end up having a minimum of two certifications, National Registry of EMT Certification and the Virginia Office of EMS Certification, uh, depending on the level that they're testing at. So again, I apologize that I can't be with you, but enjoy learning about all of our great um, nursing and health technologies classes. We've got a, a great variety. Take care and have a good night. Well, I know she's not here with us, but Good evening. we really appreciate her um, taking some time and giving us that little video. I'd like to move over and we're going to talk about health and physical education, pharmacy technician, and personal training with Professor Straffolino. So I'm going to throw it over to him. Hello, my name is John Straffolino. I am an associate professor of health and physical education here at the college. I have my email listed on this slide but I'm also the department chair for those areas as well. Now, first we'll start off with the personal training career study certificate. So the whole purpose of this is to prepare you to sit for a national personal training exam. One of the books that we use for one of our capstone courses is the ACE, the American Council on Exercise, their personal training ma uh, manual. So that's one, that's one of the texts we use. That's a lot of the literature that we use to kind of prepare you to teach that, take that exam or some of the other national exams that are out there. But it's 20 credits. It's a career study certificate. There are two capstone courses. One is our PED 168, which is our basic personal trainer preparation course. That's offered every spring. And then we also have an internship that is offered every spring as well. Now, some people will go on and looking in terms of health and physical education as a transfer program. So it's this program here we have. The personal training career study certificate kind of dovetails in. So most of the requirements, most of the coursework for the personal training career study certificate will fit into the health and physical education transfer program. 
But if you're interested in pursuing a bachelor's degree in kinesiology, uh, which is the study of movement. So many colleges have moved on to call it that, where some may still call it health, some may still call it physical education, but kinesiology is the study of movement. And there's a lot of different career paths. We look at teacher education in terms of teaching physical education in a school, athletic training is, is a big field, exercise science, health science, and then even some people who are looking at going into um, pre-med or even uh, physical therapy may elect to go and get a kinesiology bachelor's degree before they go on to attain their advanced training, their master's and doctor degrees. And lastly, the, the final program that I oversee is our pharmacy technician training program. Our pharmacy technician training program is a 17 credit career studies certificate program. And with this program, you work under the supervision of a pharmacy. So in terms of making sure you're able to dispense the medication, working with the patients, working with insurance companies, there are both hospital-based and also retail pharmacies where pharmacy technicians can be employed. Some of the different coursework that you'll be taking as a part of this is medical terminology, general pharmacology. We have a basic pharmacy one and a basic pharmacy two class. And we also have an internship with this program where students would be at a retail or clinical pharmacy in the area. But this program is approved by the Virginia Board of Pharmacy. And once you're finished this, you're eligible to take a national certification. Uh, and the one that most students gravitate toward is the PTCB, the Pharmacy Technician Certification Board's exam. Awesome. Well, thank you, Professor. And now we're going to talk a little bit about dental assisting and dental hygiene with Miss Misty. <laughs> And uh, she'll talk to you a little bit about our dental program here. Hi, my name is Misty Messmer. I'm the dental programs director here at Germana. And uh, I've been with Germana for the last 22 years and in dentistry now for almost 30 years. So um, it's a wonderful career. So a little bit about our dental assisting program. It is a one year certificate program. It's a 30 credit program. Um, graduates or students in our program will take the dental assisting national board, which is a national certification recognized in all 50 states. We take that as part of our curriculum and it is integrated throughout the curriculum with two parts being taken the first semester and the final part um, in November before the students graduate. Uh, our dental programs do run on a little different schedule than most academic programs. We operate more on calendar years than we do um, academic years. So both of our programs begin uh, each year in January. Our program is accredited by the American Dental Association Commission on Dental Accreditation. And that's a very important thing for um, students to understand that because of that, we undergo rigorous standards um, in order to maintain that accreditation. And it provides assurances both in faculty credentialing and curriculum. Um, and it, it mandates things like student faculty ratios, topics and hours that you have to complete. Our program ensures that students have 350 clinical hours of experience prior to graduation. And our students um, have experiences both in specialty practices as well as general practice. Currently, we partner with the Moss Free Clinic um, so that we're able to uh, provide services to the underserved population, but we also place students out in private offices as well so that they can um, see what that is like. It's very exciting. Actually, right before this meeting, I was having conversations with UVA um, and setting up an externship and uh, shadowing opportunities there in both their pediatric and adult clinics. So it offers great uh, opportunities there. When you graduate um, from the dental assisting program, you can uh, function as what we call a DA1 in Virginia. We, uh, because of accreditation, we are limited to 12 students. We accept 12 students each year and those applications are due September 1st. Part of the um, application process includes the TEAS test with no minimum scores, uh, short essay questions, GPA, and uh, we count points towards uh, your score based on the general education courses you have completed. You do have to uh, listen to an information session 
this session does not count as that information session. Um, this year, it's going to be pre-recorded and it will be posted online no later than June 1st. In that uh, information session, that is where you will access uh, the link to the application as well as the verification code that you need to submit your application. And this here is actually one of our, um, actually, I think all of the pictures are of our actual students being able to provide care, so um, in our clinic. All right, um, beyond the Dental Assisting One program, we do also offer Expanded Functions Dental Assisting. We have three different tracks for the Career Study Certificate. So if you're only interested in doing fillings or restorations, you could choose the Direct Restorative Techniques uh, track. If you only want to do crown and bridge and implant work, you could choose the indirect restorative techniques. But if you say, I am interested in all, um, it is the expanded functions dental assisting program. It can take anywhere from one to four semesters to complete this program, depending on where you come in at. So if you have completed our certificate in dental assisting program, it would only be three semesters. If you are coming in already as a certified dental assistant though, without formal education, it is going to be four semesters. Um, you can get the uh, registrations with the Board of Dentistry per semester. So as you complete each of the um, credentials, you can apply to, to practice with that skill and then add on. So that's why it says one to four semesters can function as a dental assistant too, as defined by the Virginia Board of Dentistry. Um, and so that includes placing restorations, uh, both silver or amalgam restorations, placing composite or tooth colored restorations, as well as placing non-epinephrine retraction cord, final impressions and final cementation of crowns, bridges and other indirect restorations. Right now, this program is limited to five students uh, in each cohort, but again, it's ongoing, and so um, it, it's not a competitive applications process at this point. Students usually have no problem getting in. And then we have the dental hygiene program. Um, this is a two-year associate of applied science degree. For the last 22 years, we have partnered with Northern Virginia Community College, um, but we have since separated from them effective early next uh, month when we graduate that last class with them. We are in the approval processes uh, for getting our dental hygiene program. In order to launch a new program, a college has to go through approximately six different approval processes. And we have successfully gained four out of the six, and the remaining two are actually in the organizations being processed, and we see no reason why we are not going to be approved. Our dental hygiene program will begin in January of 2023. We will be accredited by the American Dental Association Commission on Dental Accreditation, and it provides those same safety measures and assurances um, to dental hygiene students as the dental assisting program does. And students can function as a registered dental hygienist and apply for licensure. This program and the license of a dental hygienist does require you to take a regional clinical exam as well as a national board exam. One of the reasons that uh, we decided to no longer partner with NOVA is that we wanted to offer a, a really nice and easy matriculation for students who wanted to do our dental assisting and our dental hygiene program. There is a role in other states such as Minnesota, Maine, and Alaska. Uh, the role is called an advanced dental hygiene practitioner or a dental therapist. And so while this role is not officially recognized in Virginia, uh, having all three of our credentials in dental will lay the clinical foundation for our graduates to serve in those roles. Um, and they will be recognized both as a certified dental assistant, an expanded functions dental assistant, and a registered dental hygienist, should they choose to, to do all three of our programs. So we are very excited about that. We are the only program in Virginia uh, with this innovative idea right now. Um, and so um, it's just a wonderful opportunity. 
The dental hygiene program is very similar to the dental assisting program when it comes to terms of the competitive admissions process. Um, there will be a minimum score required on the TEAS test, and that's a 50% or better in all four areas. Um, you will also earn additional points for any previous dental assisting education or experience. And by doing our dental assisting program first, you can actually transfer up to three classes into the dental hygiene program. And then there will also be credit given on the application for any volunteer or civic engagement that you may enroll in. Um, and that volunteer and civic engagement does not need to be dental or healthcare related. Um, it can be any way that you contribute to the betterment of our community. Applications for the dental hygiene program will also be due September 1st of each year. Um, you, again, same thing, you'll have to uh, submit or listen to an application information session, and those students that are selected would begin each January. We will admit 10 students to our dental hygiene program each year. Awesome. Well, thank you, Misty. That was a lot of great information. And then we're going to move over to our various nursing capacities. And we're going to first talk about certified nurse aid and medication aid with Professor McAndrews. Hi, I'm Kathy McAndrews. Uh, I teach both these um, cert certified nursing assistant uh, program and the medication aid program. Um, I've been in nursing uh, for 40 years. So um, I've worked with people in all different facets of nursing. Uh, so the, the Certified Nurse Aid or CNA program, um, the classes right now are synchronous on Zoom and they cover all the areas um, from the skills and the rationale behind them to the going through all the body systems and knowing how to help patients um, in both hospitals and uh, assisted living or home care. Um, we do have hands-on practice hours uh, for practicing your skills. And we have clinicals at different long-term facilities as well as at Mary Washington Hospital. Uh, you get a total of 48 clinical hours as a certified nursing assistant. Uh, upon completion, you then take the state certification exam and you can then practice as a CNA. Um, again, there's many job opportunities, both in long-term care and home health and hospitals. Doctors offices and clinics are moving more to CNAs um, and even some schools are moving to CNAs working in them. So there's lots of different job opportunities with that um, role. The medication aid is a 68 hour course. And um, with that, you can become a registered medication aid or an RMA and they are allowed to give medications in assisted living facilities or group homes. We do 20 hours of clinical um, at an assisted living facility. You are taught how to give um, the majority of meds, oral, ear drops, eye drops, rectal, um, as well as giving insulin injections and checking blood sugars on the glucometer. You just don't do IVs and you don't do other injections other than insulin. Uh, when we are, you have completed the 68 hour course, you then can sit for the state registry exam through the Board of um, Nursing. And um, each course, both the medication aid and the CNA course are each um, eight week courses. So you can actually take both in one semester. Um, and they are a great foundation, um, especially if you do wanna move on to be an LPN or an RN. Um, they are a great way to have a, a very good foundation for going into future nursing programs or just to work in those various facilities, <clears throat> excuse me, as a CNA or an RMA. Awesome. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. And, and we're going to move over to talk about practical nursing um, with Ms. Dodge. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jen Dodge, and I have the honor and pleasure of um, taking over Emily Sperlaza's position as department chair for the LPN program starting in the fall. Um, I've had 
I've worked with Emily in the past with LPN students and uh, looked forward to this for years. Uh, I am a graduate of Germana's RN program, so I've come full circle back and look forward to sharing what I've, I've learned with students as well. There we go. Um, the practical nursing program at Germana is a certificate program. Uh, it's two semesters, it used to be three, and we've cut it back to two. What's important to know about that is coming up on the next slide, but I'll give you a preview. The reason why we've cut it back to two semesters is because we now require you to have a CNA certification before you as a prerequisite for the program. Um, we use a concept-based curriculum. And if you don't understand what a concept-based curriculum is, uh, in the past, uh, when I took classes through Germana, we learned by system. We would study the cardiac system or the respiratory system or the gastrointestinal system. A concept-based curriculum says we can do better. We can teach you how these systems work together as we move through the program. So instead of just learning about cardiac, you're gonna learn about perfusion, which is an integration of cardiac respiratory and hematology. Uh, the program is 40 credits and it's part of a stair-step program approach that's going to allow uh, students to progress. They start with the CNA, and that's their prerequisite to get into the LPN program. And after they're done with the LPN program, we offer a bridge. Um, there's a LPN to RN transition and you can move into the RN program. Um, at this time, uh, there is a need for LPNs in the community. Uh, the common misconception is that LPNs work in nursing homes and that's it. That's not true, actually. Uh, one of my favorite things when I talk to students about LPN certification is Look beyond nursing homes. You're needed there, but you're also needed in other, in other areas, uh, physician clinics. Um, Mary Washington Hospital actually hires LPNs to work in their, their clinics, and they also hire them for employee health. Um, uh, correction systems hire LPNs, and also um, certain community organizations like uh, FAHAS or even um, the Community Services Board will hire them. Uh, prerequisites for the LPN program. Like I said, you have to be a certified nurse aide. You must be a high school graduate or have your GED. Your GPA for the LPN program must be a 2.0. You must have a criminal background check completed. And then there's five courses you have to have before you can apply to the program. Um, they're listed here. Uh, Bio 141 is anatomy and physiology. English 111 is a composition course. Psychology 230 is developmental psych. And then we ask you to take SCV 100 or SCV 101. Those are student development courses that help you learn about the resources that are available to help you be successful. And finally, we want you to have a medical terminology or ITE, which is like a computer systems technology course. Um, you will meet with an advisor. We'll go through your prerequisites and get you signed off so you can apply to the program. And I bet you want to know when that application period is if you're interested. If you have these prereqs, our application period is from June 1st to July 1st. That being said, I'll pass the torch on to the next person. Awesome. Thank you, Professor. And then uh, I think this is the last of our nursing folks. So we're going to learn a little bit about registered nursing and our pre bachelors of science in nursing, excuse me, uh, with uh, Professor Morgan. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. April Morgan, and I'm the co department chair for the registered nursing program here at Germana. My counterpart is Ms. Sue Skinner, and our contact information was on the screen. Um, I'm here to speak with you about the registered nursing program and our general studies pre-BSN specialization degree. There are a few different pathways a person can take to become a registered nurse. Uh, you can obtain a diploma, an associate degree, or a bachelor's degree in nursing to qualify to take the RN licensure exam to become a registered nurse. Here at Germana, we offer an associate in applied science degree in nursing, which is typically called our RN program or our AAS nursing degree program. This is a two and a half year program or five semesters. Students complete 69 credit hours to earn the degree. 
Students must also apply and be admitted to the nursing program in order to take the 11 nursing courses required for the degree. Many of the general education courses can be taken prior to being admitted to our program or taken while you're in the nursing program and taking nursing courses. Once a student completes the nursing program and passes the NCLEX RN licensure exam, they may then practice as a registered nurse. We also encourage our graduates to transfer to a four-year university to go on to complete their bachelor's of science in nursing degree or their bachelor, or we also call it the BSN degree. A nurse with their BSN degree is more marketable, meaning that they have more job opportunities available to them. So why should you consider nursing? Registered nurses work in various areas of healthcare with varying salaries. The American Nurses Association explains that RNs form the backbone of healthcare provision in the United States. RNs provide critical health care to the public wherever is needed and is a critical uh, member of the healthcare care team. Nurses help people during all stages of life, from womb to tomb, and in sickness and in health, I like to say. So if you love science and working, working hands-on with people to help them improve their health, then nursing may be your calling, um, and Germana's nursing program can help you get there. Nurses who graduate from Germana nursing program are well known throughout the community and many of our graduates now serve in leadership capacities. Last year we had a 94% pass rate for our NCLEX RN exam and the national average is 83.7%. So like I said, we can help you get there. So the application requirements, if you're interested in becoming a registered nurse, um, these requirements are needed in order to apply to our program. We encourage you to strive for a B or better in all your courses, but particularly Bio 141 Anatomy and Physiology 1 course in order to be more a more competitive applicant. Um, meeting with your academic advisor is your first step, and that advisor will help you get registered for all five of those prerequisite courses that I spoke about. You need an overall GPA of 2.5 or higher. Students must also obtain a 45% or higher on their Kaplan entrance exam and complete their criminal background check in order to be eligible to apply. Your nursing advisor stand by to advise you at any point after you have been registered in your prerequisite courses and you can meet with them or you can schedule a meeting with them by going on to navigate. The application deadlines are September 1st through October 15th for the spring semester and February 1st through March 15th for the fall semester. We typically send out an email about the applicant status towards the end of November and the end of April, respectively. In addition to our nursing program, we also offer the General Studies Pre-Bachelors of Science in Nursing Specialization, or the Pre-BSN Specialization degree for short. This degree is a General Studies degree and is an Associate of Arts and Science degree. It's designed to allow students to take the majority of their required general education courses for a bachelor's, in, a bachelor's of science degree in nursing at a community college and then transfer to a four-year institution for their, to complete their BSN degree. The degree is also part of our College Everywhere program. So it can be completed online and in one year by taking five week or seven week courses. And many of our students will complete this degree in addition to completing their RN program. They utilize the summers and the winter sessions to complete the required courses for this degree. So if you have any further questions, please feel free to sign up and navigate and meet with an academic advisor or a nursing advisor. Thank you. Thank you. 
And then lastly, we have our physical therapist assistant program with Professor Daigle. Good evening, everyone. I get to wrap this up. So um, contact information again is on the screen. It's also on our website, which if you just put in the search bar PTA, you will come up with our webpage. Um, I am a physical therapist and uh, next slide, we have a, um, our director, I'm the director of the program and uh, Professor Williams is the uh, director of clinical education for the program and we both are the full-time faculty. Um, we also have another um, faculty member who has joined us at Lord Fairfax Community College, where we are about two weeks away from hearing that our accreditors have approved that satellite program. So another opportunity and more students to, to be served. They have a brand new building out there. Uh, nobody's mentioned that a couple of years down the road, we will have a brand new building as well, um, but we're very excited about our hopeful launch of the Lord Fairfax satellite program in in fall 2021. So um, our, our program is also an associate of applied science in physical therapy assisting. It's a two and a half year program, 68 credits, if you're keeping track, um, similar to the dental programs and the, and the um, nursing programs, we are have our own outside accreditor. The mouthful is the Commission on Accreditation in Physical Therapy Education, or CAPD. And again, um, they have very high standards of what we um, are expected to teach. And you have to be a graduate of an accredited um, program in order to sit for the licensure exam for the physical therapist assistant. So if you don't know a lot about physical therapy or what a PTA is, they're basically um, I, I liken it to like a physician's assistant. So the physical therapist um, does the evaluation and creates in general the plan of care, but the PTA provides the interventions. Almost all of them are interventions that the PTA um, can provide. We also treat people across the lifespan as Dr. Morgan was talking about. Um, we treat athletes, we treat fragile older adults um, and everything in between children. Um, and it's a, it's a wonderful career uh, because of that, because of the variety of jobs that you can have. Um, so again, we have our own specific PTA information session. This one doesn't count. It's, an, it's about an hour and a half of, of really, we wanna make sure every student gets the same information and really understands what, uh, what is required. We admit students for the Germana program annually, and that application is due between April 15th and May 15th. So we are in the middle of our application period right now. We also have a competitive admissions process. Um, we use the T's as does um, dental. Um, because this is the first year we're using it, we haven't stated a minimum score. Um, although our standard in the industry nationally is 60, but we have not um, put that in writing yet. Um, that is worth half of your admission points on a sliding scale based on your score on the T's. Um, and the T's, if you don't know, is a standardized test um, that is based um, on high school graduate knowledge in um, reading, English usage, math, and science. We also require our students to do observation or volunteer hours in the physical therapy setting. And you will get a, um, an evaluation done by your supervising PT or PTA. Um, so you have to do 20 hours of observing. And right now we're in the, um, you have to do outpatient because we can't get um, students into inpatient settings. Third thing you have to do, so that's worth 25 of the, point, of the 100 points. And then the third is writing an essay. Um, we actually have you watch a video about inpatient care from the ICU to hospital discharge. 
and you write an essay talking about physical therapy as you've seen it in volunteer hours, as well as in that video, and also selling yourself to us about your passion for being a P becoming a PTA. Um, you have to have a minimum GPA of 2.5. And the only grade we actually look at now is a B or better in that bio 141, all important to all of our health science programs, uh, that anatomy and physiology one. Our program begins each fall um, and we take 12 students at each site. Um, however, the Lord Fairfax site will only be taking 12 students every other year. And I don't know if there's anything else. Is that is that my last slide? Is that it? That, that is. I have so much more to tell you, but you have to come to one of our information sessions. We are doing them all on Zoom, and that information is on our website. There's a link to the college cal calendar and information sessions. Pretty easy to find, um, but that's how you get started. Awesome. Thank you, Professor, and thank you, everyone, for um giving us all that great information now how do you get started at germana it's actually really simple you just have to submit your application online which you can find at our main website if you go to the left hand side of the page there's a little black button that says apply now it should only take you about 15 to 20 minutes to fill out there are no deadlines for that application uh, there are deadlines for some of our health sciences as you learned over this session uh, there's no application fees there's no minimum gpa requirements just to join us here at germana uh, within 48 hours you'll receive an email and a phone call from my admissions team saying hey congrats on getting into germana they'll set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment with you right now it's being conducted virtually or over the phone and they'll help set up your next steps of meeting with an academic advisor, discussing which program would best fit your needs, getting you registered maybe for some of those prerequisite classes, and then make a plan of action for your next coming semesters.